Hey everyone, this is Mike from Mike's Do It Yourself. Today I want to show you how to install gutters on the side of your house. Now these are 5 inch gutters. They do come in 4, 5, or 6 inch. Now the commercial companies will usually have 6 inch gutters, but for the home improvement stores, they're going to be mostly 5 inch. They do come in plastic or aluminum. These are, or I should say galvanized steel. So these are five inch by 10 inch white galvanized steel K style gutters. And they're about $9 for a 10 foot section. Right here I'm putting on the brackets and I'm spacing the brackets out about every two feet but on the ends, I space them out one foot. So these brackets, they're called five inch aluminum hidden gutter hangers with screws. And they run about 250 a piece. Or $2 and 50 cents a piece. You can see I have wedges also on these gutters. Now these wedges will make it so that the gutters line up at a 90 degree angle once they're held on next to the fascia. I will have to trim these gutters down or these uh, gutter wedges down. I'm just placing them on there before I put my first piece up to the house. That way I can sort of eyeball how short or what kind of cuts I need to put into those gutter wedges. Here I'm using some arrow rivets and I've got an arrow rivet gun. And the rivet gun ran about $30. The rivet kit that comes with about 120 pieces was $11. And I'm using 8 inch or 1 eighth of an inch diameter rivets by 1 eighth of an inch grip or depth. Here I'm squeezing together the metal around the end cap, so that way when I drill into it, the metal won't want to separate apart. And I'll drill two to three holes in the end cap here, just so that it's secure. And this rivet gun's real easy to use. It's just a squeeze. It'll pull it in a little bit, and then you finish squeezing and then it breaks off the little nail at the end. Here I am drilling the other side, and you just wanna make sure you drill to the outside of the end cap because it's real easy to not line it up and then drill right into the edge of the end cap.
Here is the gutter sealant uh, silicone that I'm using. And it just goes to the inside of that seam of the end cap. And you can do that before or after you get the end cap attached to the gutter. Or you can do it both ways. Once I got the sealant on, I'm ready to see how those gutter wedges line up with the front fascia of the house. I want the gutters to hang down at close to a 90 degree angle. So I'll trim the gutter wedges down. And they do have indentations on the sides, so you can follow, there's two lines on each side of the gutter wedge. So you can follow those lines all the way up to trim it. There's Pebbles coming by to inspect the work. So before I attach that gutter piece, I need to drill holes in the fascia where the gutter hangers are going to be because there is a metal piece up there that you have to drill through. So I end up drilling through the gutter itself where the hangers are at. And then I will mark holes on the fascia. And then I'll pre-drill those holes to go into the wood of the fascia. So now I've got about two to three sections of gutter up. And you can see how I did the seam and I slid one into the other. Got some rivets there, the silicones in there. Here I am cutting the gutter wedges. And you can do these with just about any kind of uh, wire snips or 10 snips. I've got three sections here. put everything on too and that way it makes it easier to put it up onto the house
can see how all the hangers are lined up here. And I put the gutter wedges just next to the hangers and then I crimp the metal down just to hold those wedges in place. Here I'm cutting the end of the gutter about two inches in and that way I can slide the two pieces together. And you can see there's a lot of water in that gutter at the moment. It had been raining a lot so I have to dry all that out before I put the two together and that way the silicone will adhere to both of them. So I've got a 60 to 70 foot run here of gutters. And here I am marking the holes to where the gutter brackets will go into the fascia. And I have to pre-drill those. You can put an end cap into the middle if you have a really long run on the side of your house. I ended up not doing it. I went ahead with the whole piece just going from one to the other. And I put it as high up on that fascia as I could. And then near the ends of the house where the drains are at, I ended up tilting the gutter, the end sections down. And that way the water will run to those drains. sliding the bracket over to the hole. And then using the drill to move those screws in. And you may have to bend these brackets upward just so they attach onto the edge of the gutter properly. And then I had to go back a couple times and retighten them just so that they held on to the gutter. So I've got a screw near the inside of the gutter where the two meet and then I've got a, uh, two rivets onto the rest of it. And then I caulked with the sealant in between. So here I'm doing the end piece where the drain is going to go. It's about 43 and a half inches. So I started cutting this with snips and then I used a hacksaw, but the best way to cut this was if you see the grinder video that I made, the angle grinder video, if you use a cutoff disc, that is the best way to cut through this. Here I'm just removing any burrs and straightening out the metal. Cap. 
So this particular ink cap, I went ahead and put sealant in it before. And then I crimped it. And then I put rivets in it and then I added some more sealant afterwards. Now this piece, this is actually to use with the plastic or the vinyl, I guess it's plastic gutters, but it made a nice template for where the drown or the downspout's going to go. So the way I attach the downspouts I went ahead and made the template. I drilled a hole in the center. And you'll see that I've, I'll have i cut edges or cut to the edges and then just folded the metal out. I believe they make metal pieces that would fit in there, but I just could not find any at the home improvement stores. So this is one option on how to do it. So I just fold the metal out. That way that downspout will have a good piece of metal to attach to. And then I had to bend in a little bit on the end of the downspout piece. And then I recut the corners just to go all the way to the corners. And I drill a hole through the two pieces of metal and attach a screw. And I ended up using caulking to the inside. That way no water will go through the corners or the edges. And then I flipped it over and put caulking around the outside of it. And I pre-drill the holes for the brackets. And 
and then I mark the holes on the fascia and then I throw sealant into the bottom end of the gutter it's going to slide on and then I'll attach them with rivets and throw some more sealant along the seam And like I said, I went ahead and moved that whole section down a little bit, and that way the water will run to it. Here I'm cutting the pieces for the downspout. And then I put some anchors in the dry, the stucco to hold the brackets. And I did both sides of the house, so you'll see in another video how I did the rain barrel. But I added two drains on each side so or one drain on one side one drain on the other side of the house and I ended up not separating the gutters anywhere but like I said that is a possibility if you want to put a break in there or put two end caps in the center or, you know, 30-70, 60-40 type of split. So you can divert more water one way or the other. But this is how the downspouts look. And this is the back side of the house after it's all painted. With the downspout going to the rain barrel. And I believe this is a 50-gallon rain barrel. And I ended up painting it because it ended up being all black when it first arrived. So this is the front of the house. All right. I hope this has been helpful. This has been Mike from Mike's Do It Yourself. Good luck on your next home or automobile project. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment.